whether you're painting with acrylic, oil, watercolor, pastel, gouache, some things remain the same. So all of this is about a request I got. How do you paint black hair in acrylic? Well, you see, acrylic's not my major medium. So if I tried to give you a demonstration on the technique of painting black hair with acrylic, that would not be fair to you nor me because it's not my medium. Uh, my, my medium or my major mediums are oil, watercolor, wash, pastel. Well, what I know is there are certain things that remain the same across the board. It, whether you're painting in acrylic, whether you're painting in oils, even whether you're painting in watercolor, gouache, it doesn't matter. Some things remain the same. Now, acrylic will dry quicker, and so you have to work that little technical thing. But what I want to focus on is not a formula of how to, but I want to work with you on the technique. What do you do with your brush? How do you think? How do you approach? if you're doing any kind of hair, but since you're requested black hair, that's what we'll use as our reference. So let's begin. First of all, find the color. Now, if you're painting black hair, that doesn't mean you reach for a tube of black paint, because there are going to be some variations in there. So you'll have a much, light, much more lively color if you use two complements in their darkest version. Now one of my favorite ways to start with anything that is dark and neutral, whether it's a, a hair or anything else, is to start with ultramarine blue and a compliment, and in, in, in this case a really, really good compliment for ultramarine blue that will give us that black or that real, real neutral that we read in the black, um, is this Rembrandt Transparent Oxide Red. So, I, would, I can use those two colors mixed together and that will give me the neutral that I see in black. Something else that we'll do, uh, what we notice if we observe any, anything that's black where the light is reflecting on it, it can begin to turn kind of gray. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Now if I take ultramarine blue, I'll just take it with my brush here. I'll pull ultramarine blue right here. I'll take some Rembrandt Transparent Oxide Red and I'll put it right here. Now, what you'll see is If I add a little bit of solvent to that, what you'll see is, you see how very dark that is? How very, very dark? Well, if I, as I was talking about uh, the, the light reflecting on a black surface, if I take a little white right over here, I pull a little bit of this right in here, I get this nice gray. And I bet you nine times out of ten, you'll be very, very close to the gray that you see or the, the light that you see reflecting on really, really dark hair. But there's something else. Sometimes uh, if, when you're looking at dark hair, you might see a warmer light reflecting. In that case, reach for a little bit more of the transparent oxide red into that and there, there is the warmer version. So you see why it's a good idea to use two complements for uh, combining any dark neutral using two complements. That way, if when the light hits it, if it goes cool, you can lean that color a little bit more towards the cool. If the light goes towards the warm, as it did, as I was talking about here, you can lean it a little bit more towards the warm. So when, when you're finding color for uh, anything, but since we're talking about dark hair, black hair, whatever, when you're finding the color, find two colors that are going to give you all the flexibility that, uh, for the colors that you actually see in the shadow area and the not in shadow area of the hair. Now I have here just uh, two kinds or, or two, two examples of what hair can do. Now we know that there are multiples of designs that we see uh, in people's hair. And so the thing you look for are the shadow patterns and the not in shadow patterns as your first thing before you even begin after you find the color. So we need to distinguish the shadow from the not in shadow. Also we need to distinguish what happens on the whole face not just what happens on the hair itself. So the way we can do that 
is simply take a, a neutralized version, I mean a weakened version, which we call a wash, it would be a weakened version of the paint. In this case, when you're just starting with oil, you can add a little uh, solvent to the mixture. Here's the neutral mixture. Now I'll add just a little solvent to that neutral mixture. Get that a little bit warmer right there. And with that salt, and with, with just that mixture, and if you're working acrylic, that would be water. If you're working in watercolor, that'd be water, and so on. So what I want to do now is I want to just pull my brush over this surface. I'm doing this little girl right here. I just want to pull my brush over that surface and just discover where are the shadows. And I don't want my brush to go anywhere except where I see shadows. And I see sh or anything that's in shadow. So I see shadow all the way down this child's face. I see shadow. I see shadow coming over the eye. I see shadow doing this. And you say, what does that have to do with hair? It has everything to do with hair because the face is part of the hair. So I need. I, uh, it's better if I identify all the shadow areas first. So there's the shadow area. Oh, that's how I see now the shadow area of that side of the hair and that side of the face. And now I'm going over here. Where do I see other shadows? I see some little strands of shadow in the hair here. If I'm pulling my brush this way, I see a little strand of shadow here. I see a little strand of shadow here. And I see quite a bit, quite a bit of shadow right in here. And as it falls on her neck, right here and there, I see quite a bit of shadow in the hair. Now there's the first thing. If you divide your, your subject into shadow and not in shadow, uh, then you can look for, that will be the best guide that you'll have to get you going. The next thing, block in the shop, regardless of what you're looking at, regardless of what color you came up with, block in the shower. And what? how do you do that? You use the rhythm of stroke according to the rhythm that you see in the hair. And here's where we're going to begin now just to switch our attention to what we see here. I'm going to give you just a little bit of a of a primer just to get you going here. So I see, uh, I'm looking for a rhythm of stroke that I find in the hair. Now in her hair, here's what I find. I find the hair moving like this, moving like that. I know that I can, by, by the shape and the straightness of the hair, I know that a flat brush is going to give me the better results with that. With his hair, the hair is moving up like that. And it's got a little bit more of a curve to it. In that case, I might use a filbert brush. In this case, I'm going to be using the flat brush. So, rhythm of stroke, where to begin? Uh, you begin where uh, where to end the stroke and where to begin the stroke. And then you be gu you're guided by the pattern of the hair. All right, so here we go. I'm going to show you just a little simple introduction as to how get how to get started and I think you'll be able to take it from there. So um, well maybe we better no we'll just leave it just like that. Um, so I'm going to start with the darkest dark. Now this, this is this mixture I've made right here. I made this wonderful dark color. So I'm going to start with the darkest dark. With my brush, I see th I see that this uh, this stroke is moving this direction and moving just like this. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to move where do I start? Now that's a little thin. So what I need to do is to pull the solvent out, and that may happen to you too, especially with oil, where the solvent, where uh, the solvent can thin the paint down a little bit and get it a little bit more out of control. So I'm going to mix a little bit thicker paint here, which was probably a good thing for you to see. So I'll mix the thicker paint there. Be sure I have the, be sure I have the uh, solvent pulled out of the brush. Now let's try that again. So I'm going to load the brush. Now how do I know how to pull it? I'm going to pull it in the direction of the hair. And here we go. This is more like it, like that. All right, now we'll go to the next part of that sh in shadow area and we'll pull it down like that. We'll go to the next part and I'm just going to follow that shape according to what I see. Now, when I see a, a, a shape here that may be kind of a straight or cut, I might be able to hold the brush like this and then pull it up like that. And on this side, I may be able to hold the brush up there and pull it up like that. 
as I'm moving here, I pull the brush towards, it's, it's the, the, the movement here is going towards the back of the hair. So each time, as I'm seeing this darkness of that shadow, I may hold the brush here and then go towards the back, towards that, towards the part of the hair right back there. Now here, I have just a little bit of shadow right in there. I might hold the brush here and come down like that. And sometimes you can let the brush bend. You see like I did like that. You can let the brush bend like this. And let's see, I see another one here. I can come down like that. And I can hold the brush here like this and come down like this. You see, that's what I see here. I see it coming, uh, beginning here at her face and coming down like that. In other words, I'm looking just the shadow areas and holding my brush according and moving the brush according to what I see happening in those shadow areas. And you can see I've got that makes a very nice dark uh, black color. All right, so the, that pretty much let's get a little bit more right in here for the shadow area. I'm just going to kind of slow there and get a little bit more right there for the shadow area. Now. That's what we see in the darker darks. Let's get just a little bit of reinforcement here for that darker dark for the for the shadow area. Put a little bit there. We go. That's more like it. Now, what are we seeing here? We're not seeing black hair anymore. If you look where the light's hitting the hair, it gets very light, and so we can see there that we could move into. It gets very light and it gets kind of warm, so we can move into a lighter value, as I have here in the see just how light is that. If I hold my brush right here, I can check it out right there and see. Now that needs to be a little bit lighter than that and a little bit warmer. So I'll reach down, I'll reach into my lighter colors there. Now let's see. Let's see. Now where do I start? I could start right here and move down and let it blend in with that stroke like that. Pull the brush off. I can start here and move up like that like this. I could start at the top, let it get a little bit darker. I could start here and move down and watch how, what happens here. That stroke will, will blend with that color underneath it and that gives us that feeling of hair. We can start, let's see where else, uh, where we see it lighter, let's see it lighter right there. See it lighter right here, so I'll start right there. Now watch what happens. I can bend the brush if I have enough paint, if I don't have enough paint, it won't work. So let's get a little bit more paint on there. A little bit more, a little bit lighter. It, the, the thing that people have a trouble believing is that you're not really seeing that as black. Now let's see, so oh, I, I tell you one thing we can do, and this is, this works very well. We can stroke the paint where it's the lightest, where the light hits the strongest. We can stroke the paint in the opposite direction, like this. And you can do that with acrylic. You can do that. Actually, you can do that with watercolor too. Uh, and let's see. We'll start there. That's where the light hits the strongest. Now we can take the brush, put a little bit of that paint in. Then we can take the brush and we can move the brush in the direction that we see that hair falling, just like that. And that causes it to give us that pattern of light that we're looking at. All right. So now, same thing here. Get that pattern of light that we're looking at here. Now we've got just a little bit more shadow in there, so we'll get a little bit more of a pattern of shadow right in here. How's the brush moving? Ah, so when that happens, you just change it. There we go. How's the brush moving? The brush is moving in the direction of the hair. Now once you have the basic pattern of the light and shadow there. Then you begin to refine, but you don't want to overstroke. So how do we do that? Just a little bit of a volume on the brush of the, of the lighter colors that we're seeing. So right here at the part, a little bit of light, give it a stroke, a gentle stroke in the direction that you see the hair falling, and you see that it actually creates what feels like hair strands. Going here, same thing. Just a little bit, there we go. And here, just a little bit of blending there. As we're coming down here, just a little bit of blending. And here, 
see a little bit of blending a little bit of blending just by moving your brush in the direction of the stroke just a little bit of blending we've got a little bit of a little too much of the brown in there so if you get a little too much of one color in it you simply move with, over with another color a little bit more here a little bit more there shorter strokes where you see shorter hair longer strokes where you see the longer hair that is just a simple that is just simple a block in of showing you how you can approach how can how you can approach the painting of hair by just following these simple methods here of first of all find the right color distinguish the shadow from not in shadow block in just the shadow as you're moving your brush determine how the brush moves by the rhythm of stroke where where to begin the stroke where to end the stroke be guided by the pattern of the hair and that determines where to begin the stroke and where to end the stroke use the same approach for the knot and shadow that's what I did right here over light, overlap the light over the dark which you saw me do there and refine with as few strokes as possible and that means at the end here you don't start picking but at the end if you want just a little bit of refinement just look at the value just look at the value of the area what is the value of the light and just make short strokes to show something of that value so that is just a little primer uh, of a little process that you can adapt for yourself whether you're working with oil with watercolor with acrylic gouache pastels it's all dealing with the same thing it's observation and translation so if you found this helpful uh, you might have something that you'd like for me to address leave us a comment and we'll put your suggestion on our list and check out our full-length videos on dianemise.com you might find something you'd enjoy and there's your quick tip